Okay, so in this video, I just wanted to go over the gear. I used the mind last Nolan's 14 round I did on September. I'm going to start with close. Uh, close is going to take the most of the time of my yammering. And then we'll go over uh, sleep system, accessories, pack, that kind of thing. All right, so to start, I'm wearing this nice little casket. I found it at REI for like 10 bucks. I don't know, it's only a more, but I really love caskets because I've got this tiny little head and I love around bicycles. Uh, caskets were kind of designed to work well in uh, high wind situations, like if you're barreling down a, a mountain pass on your bicycle at 50 miles an hour. And they also kind of work when it's super windy in the mountains, so that's why I wear them. I'm wearing this really awesome La Sportiva Slipstream Tank. I really love this shirt. Uh, as you can see, I have like these massive shoulders, and this tank allows me to wear a shirt without using feelings in my fingers. Um, and I'm also wearing these La Sportiva Ultra Distance Shorts. Uh, they've got a built-in brief that's around seven inches long, uh, semi-compressed, because it has these wonderful pockets up top. You can fit things like your phone or just snacks and stuff. Really cool. Once you have these kind of uh, uh, pockets on the waistline, you can never go back. Okay, so my feet, I brought uh, socks. These are darn tough kind of midway hiker socks. It's just the socks that kind of gravitate towards. Uh, anything a long higher than a crew tends to kind of just plop down. I hate all that kind of bushy stuff right here. Uh, I don't like too much uh, padding because it just kind of gets, it gets wet and never dries out. So, you know, these work well. I had like two pairs. I probably had another one that was a smart wool, same, same basic sock. That's it for socks. All right, and of course, uh, my feet are the Sportiva Mutants. This is my favorite uh, shoe from La Sportiva in the trail or any collection for sure. And of course, I did some modifications. I actually have another video where I go over the types of modifications I did with the shoe. The most obvious is the toe box. Uh, the toe box or the entire upper is made of this really nice meshy material that's very breathable, but it's not as durable as I would like. So what I do is I just take seam grip and I actually just put a layer or three of seam grip and let it dry and this makes the toe box a lot tougher. So when I'm traveling off trail, uh, my shoe survives a lot longer. So and also probably how oh, was that? The camera made shifts roughly, and this is just made out of like an old protein canister. And I used the insole as a template and just traced around and cut that out of the top I have. All right, next layer. Okay, so I actually brought two shirts, and this is a t shirt rather than just a, a tank. And this is the Ultimate Direction Jason Slarb shirt. This is a wonderful shirt. Let me, let me just put it on. What makes this shirt really cool is it's a wool blend, so it keeps you relatively warm. And there are loose waist sweat and all those wonderful things that wool does. Except that um, it's a little bit more durable than just straight up 100% merino because it's got a little bit of like polyester in there, which is really nice. Okay, I don't have these, but um, I usually wear it on my... I usually wear a pair of Pearl Zumi Armor Warmers. They get out of their like cycling collection. And I really love those when I'm trying to regulate my heat while still going fast. In environments where the temperature keeps changing, like say going up a mountain or going down a mountain. So if I get too hot, I can just roll those arm warmers down to my wrists and they just live there for the entire run. And if I get too cool, I can roll them up. And that stops me from having to take off my pack and find more clothes to put on. All right, next layer. Okay, so with the temperatures change in the mountains in September, you know, uh, winter is well on its way. So I actually brought actually a midweight base layer and this is just something from uh, Icebreaker. It was a 175 weight, I believe. Yeah, so I like wool because it's you know, warm and it's, it's, it wicks away sweat, so. And with that, I had the bottoms that kind of match. So you're also Icebreaker, just uh, long bottoms. And these are 200 weight, um, just because that's just what I have. Um, same idea, uh, they're warm. They're very warm and uh, they wick away sweat rather than just like holding in. Um, I usually don't wear such heavy, long, uh, long underwear, uh, or any old underwear, but like, yeah, it just does, does get cold in the mountains at 4 a.m. Um, in September <laughs> at 14,000 feet, so I brought them. Okay, and I uh, will go over the other reasons why I have so many layers in a little bit once we get to sleeve system. So along with the base layer, I brought the Sportiva Triumph pants. Well, I'm gonna keep the long underwear, you know, protected and plus being a little warmer. Now we'll go to uh, jackets. Okay, for uh, jackets and rain gear, I brought the Bram Kinetic Ultra Waterproof Jacket. 
So yeah, lots of things I love about this jacket. I love the little bill on the hood. I love the, the soft hand of the material. It actually doesn't feel like it's that warm at all, but I assure you it is. Um, and it fits me really well. Um, with my big shoulder, so. So, uh, there's a much lighter jacket you could probably get if you're looking, but um, I was wearing this just as a jacket to get warmer, so I didn't mind the, the additional weight. Okay, let's go with bottoms. So I don't like wearing uh, waterproof bottoms. I hate the sound that you're that they make when you're walking. Um, I just don't like the, the, the less less range of motion they give you that kind of stuff. But I do bring them just in case I you know, I'll help break loose and start snowing. So these these are the Ultimate Traction Ultra Pants, and they're super light weight, but they will keep you dry. And this is why I wear. And they pack up really small, so that's nice. So man, get one more. <laughs> so I also bring like a little beanie. This is basically like a sweatband with a top um, from Head Sweats. Uh, I just got this at the Sports Recycling in town, but I really love it. So, so one more layer to to complete the look, and it's this. This is uh, Rab Zero G, <laughs> uh, thousand fill jacket. Um, how that? And I assure you it's as amazing as it sounds. And with this, I mean, it could get below zero and I should be fine. It's it's kind of like an emergency piece. So yeah, I brought just in case I needed to actually take a nap in the middle of the night. I don't want it warm enough to have that nap actually work. So here we go. Oh, I'm getting warm. Okay, to top everything off, I brought gloves. And these are the Grab Power Grip Contact Gloves. So these are basically like a liner that has a little rubberized kind of a patch for your palms and little fingers. Uh, and they don't get too shredded because of that rubber, which is nice. And I also brought to put on top of those, these waterproof uh, liner covers, I guess. I don't know. They're from outdoor research. I bought them with another pair of glove liners that I don't own anymore, but I bring these too. Bring these as well, just because they weigh nothing and it's just a little bit more insurance against the rain. Whew. All right, I'm gonna take some clothes off. And we're gonna talk on uh, more gear. So let me do that. All right, well, that was a ride. All right, let's talk about electronics. So I usually bring my electronics in a big red bag, so I know it's important. If I lose it, I can see it on the trail. Uh, first thing I have is a headlamp. This is a Phoenix HR65R, I believe. Something like that. Takes uh, 18650 batteries, which I brought three of. And usually bring like the ones that have a lot of high capacity as well. And yeah, I think it's buddy. It's got 3,500 milliamps, wherever that is. Yeah, what's cool about this battery too is it's got its own built-in USB charger port, so that's kind of cool. So I bring three of those. That should make me, you know, give me three, three plus nights. Then what else I bring? Uh, my inReach. These are really good to keep me safe. So if I fall or break a leg, I can tell somebody. And also, when you do an FKTs, you can verify it because you can have a live track going. So that's nice. Let's see the miscellaneous. Uh, uh, cables so like one of each like an iphone cable a usb cable or a usb c cable just to plug everything in and of course i brought a phone that's actually what i was uh recording my main track on and i also put in this battery charging case just to uh, get some more uh battery power by bringing an extra 8,000 purportedly milliamps of storage so that's nice um this thing didn't work very well i don't think uh, the battery in here is actually that big. I think it's more like 2,000. Uh, just because it only gives me like an extra 12 hours of charge. And I thought those linen, so can't really recommend this product. Yeah, I also brought an, uh, an extra 10,000 milliamp uh, battery pack. I have no idea where it is. Uh, we'll have uh, the exact one on the lighter pack. I don't suggest it though. It, it, the built in cables that comes with it have three and it doesn't work. So. Not a great purchase, but 10,000 milliamps is about what I want to bring for three days, given that I need to recharge the end reach per chance, the, the head torch per chance, and my phone definitely. Um, I also brought two pairs of uh, Bluetooth headphones because I love my teens. Well, I mean, that's all for electronics. Let's move into um, personal items. 
and bag of personal items we told are we going to find? Uh, the first thing is inhaler, because sometimes I get asthma-like symptoms. I've never been back now to stand. I might have found this somewhere in it with a friend. Spare contact, because I wear contacts and I like to see. Contact case with contact fluid in case I have to take a contact or two out. I didn't bring glasses because I'm not sure what I'm going to do without contacts. I can see about here. So it would be interesting. It would be a whole new adventure out there. Next one is, this is an interesting one. It's actually a, a kind of like a breathe right mushroom concoction just in pill form. And I found that this actually does help with uh, those asthma-like symptoms. Um, I can't confirm 100% that it works, but since using these, I don't get them, so that's nice. I can do a whole video on what I've been doing for my asthma like symptoms later, so why don't you like, subscribe, and ding that bell, or whatever they, the kids say these days. Okay, next word is uh, NSAIDs. So I usually take a leave, but I also brought just regular old um, aspirin as well as ibuprofen. And for some reason, I brought like the baby aspirins. Um, I just read the, the container wrong. Um, all of all this, like, I, I, this is enough for a horse, of course. Um, but I, I had uh, one leave the entire trip. Um, I was getting like an altitude headache. And a leave really helps me with my altitude headaches. Or if I can upset stomach. Toothbrush and toothpaste. I didn't use them. But I brought them because I like to at least tell my dentist I always do that. Okay, so these are salt tablets because I sweat a shit ton. Um, so I do supplement uh, my water with uh, salt tablets. This is probably way more than I needed for the trip. But I'm set for next one. Oh, this is one of my favorite um, personal items. This is the caffeine stash. So this is just freeze-dried coffee and actually two no-dos. So for my trip, I took, I think, half a no-dos, which is about maybe 100 milligrams of caffeine for like a shot of espresso. So that got me going. And finally, last but not least, because I am, I am genetically engineered to live in frozen bogs above the Arctic Circle and to um, roll on a lot of sunscreen. I got sincerely since super super sunburned on this trip. Um, it was way more sunny and warm than uh, the weather forecast had said it would be, and I got roasted. Um, next time I might just bring a little bit more than this little guy, but you'll learn to learn. All right, that's it for personal items. Let's do water carrying and water filtration system. That's one of my favorite ones. So the first thing I brought was a water bottle, like a bicycle version, you know, hard piece water bottle. I do prefer these. Um, I also have a lot of them because I ride lots of bikes and this is what you use. Um, I also brought a lot of nutrition that was in powdered form and I needed some place to actually put the powder and drink it. I find water bottles are the best thing, but so one water bottle. Okay, so to supplement that, I also brought a plastic and uh, just water flask this is by gsi outdoors i don't think they make this specific one but i really love this one and it's a liter capacity and it doesn't leak so props to them so brought two uh liter size katadin water filters be free water filters um i brought two just if one um breaks or freezes or you know, it doesn't work anymore, I have a backup. And this is the only water filtration I, I use for the entire trip. All right, that's that's my water carry water filtration system. Um, I would have brought something completely different, not completely different route, but there's water every few miles on the no one's route, so it's not that big of a deal. And the less water I carry, lighter my pack, hopefully faster I go because of the lighter pack. You know the drill. All right, let's talk sleep system. This is uh, my sleep system. This is the RAP Survival Zone Light Bivy. This is all I brought for my sleep system. Now, if you remember, I brought several layers of clothing um, and I'm trying to move as light as fast as possible. So I wasn't actually planning to sleep all that much anyways, but if I did need to, I just brought this very simple nylon bivy. I would just put all my clothes on and take a couple minutes now and then wake up, take the clothes I need off, and keep going. So this is all I brought. Um, this weighs about 227 grams, so that was kind of nice. All right, let's do more accessories. Okay, these are the poles I brought. Um, they didn't work very well. Uh, these are the Camp Xenon Trex pieces of shit. Um, I don't know what happened to these things. They lasted a couple miles. I got them at the sports recycling for like 20 bucks, so maybe they were broken before I got to them, but they did not pass the long range or test of durability or dependability. So I will not be buying these again. Okay, let's run sunglasses. These are amazing sunglasses. These are the 
Jobal Shield, uh, reactive lenses two to four. So they get as dark as, you know, actual glacier glasses. That's super nice when you're on a ridge line and the sun's pouring down and you know, there's no shade possible and you have a tiny little hat. These are really wonderful because they do, they are reactive and polarized. So when the light does get to a reasonable level, you can still wear them and not feel like you're stumbling along in the dark. So very pricey, but I think they're worth their, their weight in gold for sure. Oh yeah, so one more thing, that's my back. All right, so yeah, for this trip, I took the Ultimate Direction Fastback 30. Uh, this is a smaller one than I usually use. I actually use the Fastback 40 these days for like six to seven day trips. But for like two and a half days, which is what Nolan's 14 is, or three days, we've gone all the way to Olin Cross. This is pretty good, if not too big. Um, and all the stuff I showed you fits in this pack, or um, I'm wearing it. Well, with room to spare, really. So. No complaints, uh, the pack weight for all this stuff is about 21 pounds, I believe. So I do have a lighter pack that has all of this gear listed with the links to purchase them that they're available to buy, as well as the weights, the breakdown, and all the things it does. I also put put that information up as a spreadsheet on the site as well, so look out for that. And yeah, I think we did it. I think that's it. That is the rundown of the gear that I use for Nolan's 14. So, unfortunately, how did I do is a good question, too. Um, I got off of Princeton, which is mountain number four, feeling fantastic. You have to remember, the last two times I tried this route, I succumbed to asthma. Or asthma-like symptoms. I don't really want to call it asthma because I have actually been to a doctor for it. Anyways, I got off of Princeton, too. Fantastic. I've never felt so good in my life. But I also noticed that the sun was precipitously descending behind me. And I realized that it was way later at, in the day than I was uh, planning. I wasn't going to get to Yale until like well past the night, which was um, a surprise to me. I thought I'd be on Yale like by sundown. I was already hourly behind my schedule. I wasn't really worried about doing it under 60 for this trip. I just kind of wanted a fun run. But even then, I was going way too slow. So I got to the highway where uh, the Colorado Trail um, crosses it, and I thumbed a ride, and within two seconds, I was back to the point of this step. So funnily enough, because I really didn't want to, like, just hang out and actually sleep with no sleeping bag at 10,000 feet, so I decided to go to Buena Vista and hang out all night at the edge of town at 8,000 feet without a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah, I just put a book eye tape in, in my earbuds and just kind of, like, took in the view of like all the city lights or town lights I should say and grabbed the bus in the morning so unfortunately it was just it was literally a 26 mile fun run or whatever it was with 12,000 feet of elevation gain so sad trombone I had lots of fun out there and I ended the trip without being destroyed it was just another like training run so it happens this has been such a nemesis route for me this is literally the fourth time i like tried to do it with little success like this is the least amount of mileage i've done in all four tries so i'm only getting worse and slower <laughs> and i don't know what it is like it's not the pack size it's not the pack weight i've done bigger and smaller i just i don't know this route just does not work for me i just need a harder less runnable route i guess or become better at running. I'm not sure which one I want to go for. Depends, I guess, what I have, what I'm doing in the spring, which is, uh, it's a secret at the moment, so I'm not going to tell you anything, that's it. Um, yep, do the like and surprise subscribe thing. Uh, oh yeah, wait, we forgot something. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah, so the last thing I want to talk about is food. I forgot to talk about food. So, this is a package that has a day's worth of food in it. And I'm 190 momo pounds, a giant manly man. And this is what a day's worth of rations looks like for me. So, we'll break it out really quickly. I'll do another video on uh, nutrition for fast packing or no one's 14. I have an old one. I'm doing an update. So, look for that. So, let's see what's inside here. First thing we have is a uh, full of protein bars with like 12 grams of protein each or something. I just really prefer this brand. Uh, there's tons of different kind of protein bars out there. Um, and then I, I was experimenting. This is just a bunch of BCAAs. I hear it's 
helps with uh, endurance or something if I check it out. Uh, inconclusive. Although I, I heard it helps with the asthma, but inconclusive. Uh, these are a bunch of nut butters in little um, packets. I find the packets, although expensive to buy, you gotta keep them on the sale. Really help with keeping things clean. Yeah, I'm not gonna bring a jar of peanut butter with me in a spoon, but uh, these work really well for me. You know, about 300, 200 calories each, so get a little bit fat, get a little bit of protein, a little bit of sugar. Um, dried fruit. I brought a bunch of dried fruit with me. Every day I brought a different type of dried fruit, so this day it was dried uh, cuties or whatever they're called. Yeah, the last thing I brought was uh, scratch, you know, I think it's like how their endurance feel. Um, very pricey. Like, I, I got one, two bags and I split up with three days worth of rations, so. Um, each bag was 40 bucks, so I don't use this all the time. For, for something special like Nolan's 14, I do. Um, it just works for me. It's very neutral in taste, doesn't mess up with my stomach. Has a lot of calories that aren't simple sugars. Yeah, it works for me, uh, again, but it's cost prohibitive to use like as an everyday thing. So keep that in mind. I will do a breakdown of calories um, and maybe even macros. If not in the later pack, this video, I'll do it in the next video where I just talk about all of the nutrition I use for each and every trip I took this summer. So, something we'll go for. Okay, finally, I can say goodbye. If uh, you're interested in those other videos, please like, subscribe, um, ding the bell, whatever the kids do these days. You know, they're they're hip. They know, they know the scene. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.